Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today I'm revisiting one of the most asked about topics regarding EV ownership, battery degradation. As promised, we're testing the battery health of our 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor, which just hit 150,000 miles. If you've been following the channel, you know I've been documenting both our 2018 and 2019 Model 3s for years, tracking real world maintenance, costs, and battery performance over time. Last year, we tested the 2019 Model 3 Standard Range Plus and found it was holding around 82% of its original battery capacity. So how does the 2018 compare after an extra year and quite a few more miles? Let's find out. Just as a refresher, this 2018 Tesla Model 3 was purchased brand new and has the original battery pack. It has nickel manganese cobalt batteries, unlike some newer Model 3s that now use lithium iron phosphate packs. This car has lived its life in Arizona, where summer temps climb regularly above 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius, which can put extra stress on the battery. Despite that, it's been an incredibly reliable daily driver. At seven years old and 150,000 miles, the 2018 has gone far beyond Tesla's standard eight-year, 120,000 mile battery warranty. So this test gives a great look at what battery health looks like once you're past that milestone. When I first tried doing the battery health test last year, it was inside Tesla service mode, which is typically reserved for service center technicians. It worked, but it wasn't very user friendly. Now Tesla has moved the battery health test right to the user facing service menu, making it much easier for owners to access on their own. This mode may have been removed from some cars though, so it may not be available in your vehicle. The interface is cleaner. You get clearer updates on what stage the test is in. I think the one in service mode assumes you've been trained on the process, so it's a bit fake. So this year's test was a lot more straightforward than it used to be. The way it works is similar. The car needs to start the test under 20% charge, and once activated, it'll fully discharge the battery down to 0% before automatically charging itself back up to 100%. This lets the car calculate exactly how much energy the battery can hold today. While you're only required to get it under 20%, it's best to bring it down as low as possible safely. This way, you don't have to spend a long time discharging the battery. To start the test, go into the settings menu and click on service, then battery health. You'll get this message explaining the current status of your battery. We haven't run a full test on this car before, but there haven't been any detected issues, so it's just labeled as healthy. It also explains a bit about battery degradation and some information about the test. It warns that this test will take about 14 hours. In our case, it took more like 16 hours. When you're ready to commit to that time frame, click on the battery health test button at the bottom. It'll then make sure that you meet all the requirements at the top. You can't run this test at a DC fast charger or with a level one charger. I'm just using my mobile connector hooked up to a clothes dryer outlet, so I should get about six kilowatts of charging. Make sure to read all the warnings at the bottom of the screen. It mentions that the car will start making noise while it's discharging. This is because it generates waste heat in the motors and then vents that heat out to discharge the battery. So if your car is parked in a garage, it may get a little warm during the test. When you're ready, click Start Test. One important thing to mention, once it hits 0%, the car sat there for almost three hours before it finally began charging again during our test. This is normal for the test, but if you're doing it at home, don't panic. It looks like the car is just dead, but it's actually completing the discharge phase and preparing to recharge. We started off the test at 6% at 350 p.m. and it completed around 8 a.m. the next day fully charged. After the full sequence finished, we got our result. 79% battery health on our 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range after 150,000 miles. So what does the 79% mean in real world terms? That means the battery has retained about 58.5 kilowatt hours of its original 74 kilowatt hour usable capacity, which translates to roughly 21% degradation over seven years of Arizona heat and high mileage use. If this Model 3 originally got around 310 miles of range, it's now closer to 245 miles per charge, depending on conditions. While that might sound like a big drop, it's important to remember that most battery degradation happens early on, within the first few years, and then slows down significantly. For comparison, Tesla's 2024 impact report mentions that Model 3 and Model Y batteries typically lose about 20% capacity after 200,000 miles on average. 
our result is slightly higher at 21%, but still within the standard deviation for cars around 150,000 miles. Our 2018 has seen plenty of road trips, supercharging sessions, and daily commuting in hot weather. All of those naturally contribute to a little more degradation over time. Realistically, all this means is that during a road trip, we'll have to stop to charge sooner than when it was new. Regular commuting around town wouldn't be affected with the range of EVs these days. This car still has no problem charging at its maximum rate when DC fast charging too. If you're a new EV owner and curious about battery health, here are a few tips. Avoid leaving your car at very low or very high states of charge for long periods of time. I mean multiple days and weeks, not hours. For NMC batteries like this one, keep your daily charge under 80% and only charge to 100% for long trips. If you have an LFP battery, it's typically recommended to charge to 100% regularly. In hotter temperature areas, try to park in shaded areas and when possible, try to use as much home charging as you can with level one or two. Of course, always look at your particular car's manual and manufacturer's instructions on taking care of your car's battery. It's interesting to see how the 2018 Model 3 performed. If you're going to do this on your Tesla, it can only be done every six months, but I wouldn't do it frequently anyway since it puts stress on the battery. For anyone considering a used Model 3, this kind of data shows that Teslas and EVs in general can handle long-term ownership well. Degradation doesn't mean the car's nearing its end. It just means you'll have a little less range than when it was brand new. If this rate of decline continues, the car could realistically see 200,000 miles with around 75% of its original capacity or better. This car still has many more miles to go. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my other Tesla ownership updates. I've done yearly breakdowns on maintenance and costs. We've even done a comparison between our 2018, 2019, and newer Model 3s and Ys. Thanks for spending time with me today. Support our channel and check out our Kaya sticker shop. Kaya is my dog. And follow us on social media at Kaya ZV. That's all for now and happy charging.